Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining us. This is the first Sunday in September. We are Unity Way Church. We're a metaphysical church, which means that we go into the meaning behind the meanings of words of not only scripture, but a principle in law, which we can use every day in our life to bring about the experiences that we want to experience. So I invite you this morning to join with me in our open opening affirmation, and this is from Wings of Prayer, and it is, recognize every evidence of good, every manifestation of health as an expression of God. I invite you just to breathe in that truth. Let us recognize that we are one with the one. We are one with that almighty presence the presence that is available to all of us, of unconditioned love, unconditioned zeal, unconditioned order, unconditioned faith that we can tap into and use every day in our life, in our experiences. And we do that by remembering too, as good Unity True students, there is only one presence and one power, God the good, the omnipotent. That one substance, everything is birthed out of that one substance. So again, I invite you just to breathe in that truth, to recognize that you truly have a divine identity. In unity, we call it the Christ. Jesus is Jesus the Christ. He also had that divine identity. And he showed us how we show up as our way shower. And we teach in unity that Jesus is not the exception, but the standard. He modeled for us how we show up and live a wonderful life. So again, let's just breathe into that truth all the way down to our soul's roots. Let us know. Let us be. Let us be at one with that one Holy Spirit presence within us. And if you believe that high calling of truth with me, I invite you to use the mantra you use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now, here is Rick with our daily word. Good morning. Our word for today is balance. And today we affirm, with God, I live a life of balance. Work can be a fulfilling use of my talents and efforts. I may enjoy the challenge of growing in responsibility and using my ambition to accomplish great things. But if I work too much for too long, My energy might start to wane and my thinking become dull and uninspired. Likewise, too much leisure time may rob me of motivation and pull me into a spiral of inactivity. Spiritual practices bring precious balance into my life. Through prayer, I touch eternity and feel the presence of God within. Through meditation, I focus my mind and feel calm and grounded. Through speaking affirmations, I claim divine ideas and act on inspiration. In gratitude, I find balance in God, the one presence and one power in my life. And our Bible verse for today is from Job 31, 6. Let me be weighted in a just balance and let God know my integrity. And again, we affirm with God, I live a life of balance. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. We do appreciate that. And we all need more balance in our life. Balance is related to one of our 12 powers, which is order. Because we need order, and order is balanced. It's harmony. It works. It works when you work it, and if you believe that you can have order and harmony in your life. So we just say, thank you, God. It's a perfect uh, opening, too, because I have a very interesting comic for you this morning. And it's the scene, as you can see, of a man at work. And on the keyboard, the man has his cat sitting on the keyboard. And the caption is, he's talking on the phone to somebody, today is take your cat to work day. So I'll have limited access to my computer. I love it because as you know, when cats uh, want your attention, they definitely want your attention. So I just, I like that comic for sure. 
And for my minister's joke page, good news, bad news, I'd like to share with you a little ditty here, and it is the good news is the women's group of the church voted to send you a get well card. Here's the bad news. The vote passed by 31 to 30. So you're very lucky, that minister, that he was going to get his card. One of the ways that we can bring healing and joy into our life is to have the ability to laugh not only at ourselves, but not take our own selves so seriously, but believe in the power of humor. Humor has a powerful way of opening our souls to be more receptive to the truth that we know to be true. This morning, my uh, talk title is Spiritual Labor. What does Reverend Michael mean about spiritual labor? To me, spiritual labor is using the truth that you know and putting it into all the labor or the activities that you do in your daily life. Which means whether you like the task that's before you or you don't, you can still do it with a positive attitude. And even if it's uh, something you don't particularly care about doing, with an attitude you can get through it, you can still have fun, and I believe really being integrity is a good, true student. So we'll be sharing some ideas about how we can share that. And I also want to also wish all of us a happy Labor Day because we're celebrating it tomorrow. Uh, I'd like this little history of Labor Day. The first Labor Day was celebrated in New York City on September the 5th, 1882. After the death of 13 workers during a plumbing strike in June 1894, President Grover Cleveland, and I know none of you voted for Cleveland here, uh, President uh, Grover Cleveland made reconciliation with the labor movement a top priority in his uh, administration, and Labor Day became a federal holiday in 1894. One of the big things that came out of that uh, working together with labor in the government was Americans at the time before Labor Day, uh, they worked 12, instead of 12 hours, they were working, they were working 12 hour shifts seven days a week during the 19th century. Again, they, people, when you were in the workforce, you required to work 12 hour days, seven days a week, that's a lot of time. That's huge. And people were just starting to make mistakes, and they were just getting tired. So when they passed the uh, Adamson Act, which passed September the 3rd, 1916, it established an eight-hour workday. Eight hours seems like a lot of time, but can you imagine 12 hours, 12-hour 12 shifts? That's quite long. Also, Labor Day is the first Monday in September. And again, the main theme or definition of Labor Day is it's a tribute to the con uh, co all the contributions that workers have made to our country's well-being. And we salute those workers, all those people that are working behind the scenes, around us, that we don't even know about, that help keep us moving forward as a nation. And we just bless them and say thank you. In my research for this talk, I came across, you've heard the slogan, you can't wear white after Labor Day. Well, I found out where that came from. The phrase, you can't wear white after Labor Day, this rule was basically created to separate the old money elitists from the new money group. The elitists left the city during the summer, and white was considered a vacation attire. I bet you didn't know that. That's really the real reason uh, why people say you can't wear or white after Labor Day. Work. The object of all work is to express the powers of one's being for humankind's benefit. That's really the definition of labor for both men and women. The object is the work we do is to express as human beings the ability to show up and do what needs to be done, again with a smile on our face and with a good attitude. I'd like to share some wisdom, and this is from Maya Angelou, and she says, Whatever we want to do, if we want to be great at it, we have to love it and be able to make sacrifices for it. I think it's very important for us to realize, too, the word sacrifice actually means to make sacred. So when you're giving of your time and your energy and your soul talents, you are giving a part of yourself, your soul's energy. And so you want to be special. You want to do the task at hand. And I believe you really have to want to do it. You really want to serve not only what you're doing, but also how you're showing up for your own integrity. 
Work and labor are divine love made into visibility. If we can't work with love, but only with disdain, it's better to leave our work and sit at the temple gates taking alms of the people who can work daily in joy. Whatever you're doing, if you can't do it in joy and you have a bad attitude, I really suggest you need to pray about if that's really the work you should be doing. Because whatever the task is, if you show up with the wrong energy, energy doesn't lie, people are going to pick up on it. And they're going to know if you're really authentically engaged in the activity. Again, Labor Day is a chance to remember the value and the satisfaction of good work. We were created to do and to be, and that is the laboring, and we can do it as a labor of love. It doesn't have to be a negative idea of labor. And I'm not saying there isn't rest and work, and we don't have that balance in our life, because we do need that. But I think sometimes uh, in the edemic mind, we kind of think of work is all bad, and we just want to relax. I have found that by hard work, dedicated work allows you to appreciate your time of relaxation so much better than if you were just relaxing all the time. And this is some wisdom from the Jewish scriptures, the famous book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 14. The work of a man's hand comes back to him. And what it's saying is the work that you give is what you're going to receive back by the law of attraction. So again, where are you spiritually? Are you spiritually laboring with a truth consciousness, doing the best that you can do? It's a question each and every one of us need to ask, not only on Labor Day, but anything, any idea or work that we're engaged in. Are we really present? Are we really, really present? I like to say the poorest person on earth is not the person who has no job, no cars, no money, and no house. The poorest person is the one who has no vision, because when you're visionless, that's poverty in disguise. That's truly a truth idea. So what's your vision for your work? You know, in life, sometimes it's one, two, three. Step one, step two, step three. Sometimes we work to get to that, that place where we want to do the work we want. That's part of laboring and really enjoying the spiritual labor of how, again, the tasks that we are engaged in. Do we want to know who we are? Don't ask be and act. Action will de uh, delineate and define us. Regardless of the words that come out of our mouth, energy does not lie. How we show up, how we are being in the situation, tells so much about where we are vibrationally in our journey as a spiritual being. I think it's something we need to really pray about. And again, if we're involved with work that we're not enjoying, we need to ask why. Maybe it's too complicated. Maybe we need more schooling. Maybe we need more skills. Maybe we can acquire those skills to the, do the job better. We can ask those questions because in spiritual labor, the idea is that we're doing it the proper way to the best of our ability for today. Tomorrow, we could have more skills and do an even better job. That's how we grow spiritually and move forward. And from that famous Greek philosopher who is actually the teacher of Alexander the Great, this is Aristotle, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. See, our work and our job is related because, again, it's the energy that's going into it. If you really don't want to make brownies and you burn them, then you probably shouldn't have been making brownies. I mean, where are you? Where's your labor of love? Where's your spiritual understanding of doing what you're doing to the best of your ability? One of the things I'd like to share with you is to bring some new insight or light into the tasks that we do in life is try new things. Are you willing to try new things? Are you willing to iron with a new starch? Are you willing to do something a little bit different? I'd encourage you to do that because we don't want to be afraid. We want to step out of our comfort zone so this way we can really soar and truly be authentic in all that we do. And I found some, uh, some cute little stories I'd like to share with you concerning Labor Day and about work. And I thought, and I know you're going to enjoy these. As a young man, my first job was in an orange juice factory. But I couldn't concentrate on the same boring rind, so I got canned. 
<laughs> then I worked in the woods as a lumberjack, but I just couldn't hack it. <laughs> so they gave me the axe. <laughs> Got to have a little bit of fun on Labor Day here. After that, I tried working in a donut shop, but I soon got fired, or I soon got tired of the whole business. I manufactured calendars, but my days were numbered. I tried to be a tailor, but I just wasn't suited for it. Mainly because it was a it was a so-so job, depleting and depressing. I l took a job as a upholsterer, but I never recovered. Uh, see, we had to have some humor on Labor Day. We had to have some fun and a grin on our face. Because, again, it helps us get through the duties that we're doing and allows us to be authentic. I'd like to share some wisdom. This is from Donovan Bailey. Follow your passion. Be prepared to work hard and sacrifice. And above all, don't let anyone limit your dreams. The work that you do should be the work that you want to do. Is this the work you want to do? Ask yourself that. Take it into prayer. Go into the silence. We are not here to just have a patched up life. We're not here just to live on the rinds of some fruit that we've tossed or activities that we once did. What do you want to do now? You want to paint? You want to read? What do you want to do? You want to plant? You want to be a gardener? You want to be a cook? You want to be a better mechanic? Spiritual labor and using this mindset of positivity will affect you and can lead you into acquiring those skills. We didn't get there by wishing for it by non-activity. See, wishing and wishing and wishing is maybe part of the process, but it's not going to get the job done. But by directing the work that we do with our hands. We are meant not to just sit in the shade and, you know, and count butterflies or flies or whatever you want to count, or even our fingers. We're here to do meaningful work. We're here to work as Jesus was here as our way shower. We're here to show up every day living and believing in the kingdom of God, which is within us. I will say spiritual labor also includes disciplining. We discipline ourselves so we take the high road. And when you take the high spiritual road, you have self-confidence. Do you have self-confidence? Do you have self-esteem? You should. And personal self-satisfaction. When you have done a good job, might not be perfect, but you did the best you could, that's called spiritual labor. And you can say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And that should be our prayer when we are finished up doing what we do or whatever that task may be. I'd like to share some insight, and this is from the famous inventor Thomas A. Edison. And he says, there is no substitute for hard work. It's a great quote, but do you believe it? And even though it's hard work, I believe we can still do it in a spiritual way and still have fun while we're doing it. Even if you have to dig a hole, you can still have fun when you're doing it because attitude makes such a difference. We want a positive spiritual labor attitude. It'll get us through any situation. And we will end up on the other side of it, and we'll be much better and more relaxed. I will say by putting hard work into one's goal and achieving, it's really, it gives us such a deep soul feeling when you've accomplished something, when you ba baked a cake, or you planted a tree, or you just did the, you cleaned the car and you waxed it. You can breathe into that and say, yes, that's spiritual labor, and I did it, and I'm authentically saying, thank you, God. That's, that is how we should be showing up for all of our activities, even if it's ironing or doing the laundry. Here's the deal, amateurs sleep, amateurs sit, Amateurs lounge around waiting for their inspiration. You're not an amateur. You're the Christ. Spiritual labor is in your nature. You have the divine ideas and the possibilities to do and be anything or experience the work that you want to engage in yourself. So spend some time in it, take it into prayer. See, the rest of us just get up and go to work. We do the task at hand. And I'm not saying if maybe we're having a snag that we don't take a pause, maybe take two pauses, maybe go outside, get a breath of fresh air, 
but we do the work that needs to be done. Kind of like what I was talking about last week about deadlines. When there's self-created deadlines, it really works with us and gives us a better understanding of the energy that will come from spiritual labor. And from the famous book of Proverbs, uh, in the Jewish scriptures, this is chapter 10, verse 4. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. We're here to be about doing the work of the kingdom. Are you about doing the, doing the work of the kingdom? You do the work of the kingdom by being a repeatable Christ, by being and doing what we teach at unity, that we really believe these truths really work. They're just not theories. These are laws and principles that we work with. We claim them as our own. Not just because Jesus or unity uh, expresses them, but we believe. We know that affirmation and denial, those are ways that we can change our attitudes and we can go about the work that is before us with a positive attitude. Again, nothing works unless we eventually do the required work. If you want to build a fence, just dumping the lumber on the dirt is not going to put the fence up. You got to have a hammer. You got to have some nails. If that's what you want to do is build a fence. If you want to make a cake, you need to have some flour or you need to have a recipe that you're going to work with. Just pouring some water in a bowl and putting it in the oven is not going to make a cake. You have to do the work. You have to be prepared to do the work. We learn the honest value of work by working hard with, again, a positive spiritual labor attitude. Yet I'm really pushing the spiritual labor attitude because it allows everything to be into sync. It allows us to be in total alignment where all of our 12 powers are working together in balance. We learn and we be. That means we become who we were meant to be. Nothing stops the soul with a right, truth, mental attitude. So what's your attitude this morning? Is your attitude this Sunday better than yesterday? Maybe not. Is tomorrow your attitude going to be better? Maybe in this moment you could change your attitude right now and have a positive spiritual labor attitude. Put it to practice. Put it to work. See if it does not change the situation, change the relationship, change the task at hand. I guarantee you it will. Because the energy is different. The energy is a higher energy and it's moving us into the direction we want to go. And now some more stories about labor. In my prime, I, this is in his prime, I, next I tried working in a car muffler factory, but that was just exhausting. I wanted to be a barber, but I just couldn't cut it. <laughs> Gotta laugh, guys, it's Labor Day. Then I was a pilot, but tended to wing it. And I didn't have the right altitude, attitude, <laughs> I love it. I studied to become a doctor, but I didn't have enough patience for the job. Come on, people. Uh, become, I became a, Vel a Velcro salesperson, uh, but I couldn't stick with it. I tried my hand at a professional career in tennis, but it wasn't my racket. Gotta admit, these are some pretty good ones here. I was too high strung. I became a baker, but I wasn't, but it wasn't a cakewalk either. And I couldn't make enough dough. Ha <laughs> ha, come on guys. Uh, they fired me after I left a cake out in the rain. I was a masseuse for a while too. I mean, you got to give it to hand to this man. He has tried a lot of different activities in his life. He became a masseuse for a while, but I rubbed people the wrong way. I managed to get a job, a good job, working for a pool maintenance company, but the work uh, was just too draining. We have to laugh, and I think one of the things I loved about these st little stories is they make us chuckle. And again, chuckling is a way we can release energy and tensions in our life so we can experience really spiritual labor and be on point, again, be in alignment. Robert Burns says, Dare to be honest and fear no labor. Don't fear a task at hand. If you're prepared and you've done your groundwork, 
and you've learned a skill, go forward with the assurance that spiritual labor will assist you. And if there happens to be a snag, you'll get that gut feeling that maybe you need to relook at this. Maybe you need a little bit more expertise. Anyone who's ever, ever dealt with plumbing will definitely know what I'm talking about. It's so easy to put pipes together, it looks. But when you're dealing with water, it can be challenging. So be in the moment. And when you understand spiritual labor, you get those ahas. And when you get the aha, you act on it. That's what's so important. There are no secrets to success in life. There are no secrets. There's no abracadabra. There's no open sesame. It's called being about and doing the work of the kingdom in spiritual labor. What it is is success is the result of preparation. Again, hard work and learning from failure. I'm a firm believer that failure can be a great teacher. Failure can be a great growth opportunity. You learn that whatever you did didn't quite work out the way you want. You learn something. And if you have that kind of attitude, it really fosters a spiritual labor attitude. So when you do that task again, you've learned from that mistake. You've learned maybe your oven's a little bit too hot. So when it says take the cake out at 25 minutes, you take it out at 20. See, those are the things you learn in the doing of the task at hand. And so mistakes are really a gift if you use them correctly. I would say stoke those fires. Also, get out those uh, dead fears or anything that is keeping you snagged or stuck in any way. You don't want to live in the swamplands. You want to live where you can do what you truly choose to do. And this is from Ralph Marston. Rest when you're weary. Refresh and renew yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit. Then get back to work. It's a great mantra because there is a time when we maybe get tired. There's a time when we need to be refreshed. There's a time when we need to renew our energies. But then we get back to work. We get back to spiritual labor. Again, showing up with the right attitude. I would say don't go around saying the world owes you a living. How many times have you heard that? Oh, the world owes you a living. Here's the deal. The world owes you and I nothing. It was here first. And I love that wisdom. And this is from that New Thought sage, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Without ambition, one starts nothing. Without work, one finishes nothing. The prize will not be sent to you. You have to win it. Well, he's talking about the task at hand. If you put the time in and you live in integrity and you practice and you pray, have a better understanding of spiritual labor, you will receive your just rewards and you will be blessed. Again, labor is a divine property and it alone finishes project, projects that we're involved with every time. Be proud of what you do. I didn't say be conceited, but be proud of the task at hand. We're the Christ. We deserve to be proud of what we do. Is it perfect? Is it going to go on reality TV or be in a, in a picture in a magazine? Maybe not. But if you did the best you could do, that's A+. Plus. That's a thumbs up. That's spiritual labor. And from uh, Trisha Cunningham. The individual who says it is not possible should move out of the way of those doing it. Uh, I love that attitude because you're going to find in life, and I'm sure you have already, people that are naysayers. It can't be done. It can't be done for whatever a zillion reasons they come up with. And they have a right to think that way in their consciousness. But we also have a right to be in a spiritual consciousness and exercise spiritual labor and knowing that if we pray about it, we will be led how to accomplish the job at hand and do it successfully. So we kindly bless them and we move forward again in spiritual labor. Again, labor uh, preserves us from anxieties and foolishness. When we work, when we do a task and we're finished doing it, we feel good afterwards. We sleep at night. We wake up more relaxed. It puts us into harmony, kind of like our daily word about balance. We're here to be about doing something. We're just, again, not here to take a nap or a siesta under a uh, palm, pomegranate, 
palm a granite, granite <laughs> tree, palm tree, we'll say. That is what we want to do. We're not here just to rest. There's a part of rest that's part of the balance, but then we get back at the task at hand. Work keeps us alert to spirit, and I really believe this. The more we trust spirit with every activity we do, if you get a nudge not to get on the freeway, I invite you not to, ta I, not to take it, to take it. If you get a nudge to turn here, take it. That's what happens when we are spiritually engaged. And again, when we get that kind of aha, if you don't act on the aha, it really serves you no purpose. We need to be alert in our awareness. In closing, I'd like to say, the question isn't who is going to let us, it's who is going to stop us. No one's stopping you from performing spiritual labor in every task that you do. You know, folks with resolve find opportunities, and they will discover new ones. Where, wherever you are in your life journey, discover a new task, discover a new way of doing some activity that you have to do or you want to do. Put a spiritual attitude into it, a positivity. And I guarantee, whether it's baking a cake or baking brownies, or ironing a shirt with uh, starch, it will show up differently and you will feel proud. You will really feel that you've contributed to a spiritual labor. Have a wonderful Labor Day tomorrow and just know that you are blessed. And be about doing the labor that your soul individually chooses to do. Not because you're told, because you feel that's the task that you're supposed to do. And we just say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service with the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, or our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and put it in the palm of your hands. I invite you to imbue it with the energy of spiritual labor. Whatever your labor is today, whatever you're going to do today, fill it with that joy of knowing that you are blessed in everything that you do. That you are here to not only work hard, but also have a restful time too. Again, that's all about balance. And again, you can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. You can also go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. And again, we are a tithing church, which means that we tie back to where we are spiritually fed. And that is exactly what our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, taught us to do. And we truly do that today, and we are blessed. And we know as we give, we already receive. Your blessings are already coming to you right here and right now. You are blessed. If you'd please join me with our prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. You just say, thank you, God. Thank you for the ability to give this gift and to see us to not Unity Way Church, but it goes forth to bless the world and also bless each and every one of our souls. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. We are protected because we are one with the one. The power of the, and the presence of the Christ lives within each and every one of us. Let's seize that understanding this morning, not only for our own family, but for all that we do and for our entire world. Regardless of appearances, we affirm protection and safety for all this entire world. And if you'd please join me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a relaxing, but have a meaningful Labor Day tomorrow. Rest up and just be thankful. I invite you to be thankful for the spiritual blessings that you have enjoyed in your life. And let's bless the labor that is still being done. Because even though some people are on holiday, we still have electricity, we still have water, planes are still in the air. Let's say, aha, and just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Be blessed, and I'll see you next Sunday.